Today I'm going to be showing you how I created this look. It is a lip focused look, obviously. It's great for the time of year that I'm filming this, which is the holiday season. You can't go wrong with a bold red lip, obviously, uh, but this is also something I like to wear throughout the year. And I'm gonna be going into depth with my base routine, foundation, concealer, all that, specifically focusing on creating a skin look that is compatible for acne scarred skin like I have. And instead of leaning into it being dewy and fresh, I'm really going in depth with this. I want a base that's gonna last, last through an event, last through a sweaty day, last through a holiday evening where you're eating, drinking. So this is really in depth base. We're really focusing on that. A little bit of eyes, a little bit of soft shimmer and red lip. I'm going through three lips today, which you'll see at the end, and featuring Lisa Eldridge Velvet Ribbon, which is on my lips right now. Classic red lip, blue-based red, and I'm gonna be comparing it to two other shades from Lisa Eldridge, which is Velvet Jazz. This one's a little deeper. I love this one as well. Can't go wrong. And then I'm also gonna be showing this look paired with a really, really vibrant shade from Lisa, which is Velvet Morning. This is more, this is more orangey, so vivid. And just a reminder, if you do like this video, please subscribe because I am growing this channel right now. And any new subscribers, any new comments are so appreciated for me. Any support helps. And yeah, let's get into it. So this is my in-depth base routine. I, for the most part, do make time in my day to do my in-depth base routine because I find it's what looks best with all of my makeup looks and also lasts the longest. Uh, but I especially developed this routine last summer when I was working outside in the hot sun for like hours on end, like sometimes like 10 hour days outside. So I wanted something that was light, but good coverage and just wore well. And this is what I landed on. And this is what I've been sticking with since then. So the first thing I do is color correct beneath my eyes. And I haven't primed my skin or anything. Sometimes I will use the milk hydro grip if I'm finding my skin is really dry or something, but for the most part I just do some moisturizer and let it set, let it absorb, and then I go in with my foundation and everything. So so I've been using this Charlotte Tilbury color corrector. It's highly panned, but basically it's, you can barely see the product. It's just a bit peachy, so it's gonna cover my, help to cover my very blue bluey purple green under eyes. So I always start with putting it here and into this part of my eye as well. If I'm ever doing a no makeup day, I will still do this step because I just have very translucent skin under my eyes and I'm not a fan of how it looks. So working it under the eye and yes, very much into this space as well and at the edge of the eye, because that's where there's that redness that like drags the eye down and creates a shape that isn't necessarily the shape of my eye. It's just the shape of the discoloration around my eye. So that's step one, just a little bit of color correction. Then I go into my concealer next, focusing on areas where I know I want that extra coverage or I have blemishes. This was a technique when I first kind of heard about it that I was like, why would you do that? You're gonna waste so much concealer product by putting it on first and then going in with your foundation. But what I find is instead, you, you cover what you need, and then when you get your all over base going on, it's not as heavy if you're trying to like get coverage mostly from your foundation at first. I hope that makes sense. So this is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Vanilla. Again, a little bit extra in these areas because that is where there's so much discoloration. I also put a bit here because this is the part of my face I'm really gonna be brightening and kind of just canceling out 
My face structure has a pretty distinct nose bridge, so it comes out a lot, you know? So shadows will gather here, and I don't like how that looks, because it draws my eyes in, and I prefer my face to feel kind of open. So that's where I focus concealer and brightening products. So around the nose, I have a lot of like acne scarring here from freaking like 10 years ago, and yet a little bit here. So that's kind of the main areas. And then using my concealer brush, just blend it out. Now this is kind of just like a sloppy blend out because I am still going in with the foundation all over the face, but this is more just again, like starting to get that fuller coverage in any areas I need it more. So as you can see, my face looks a lot more evened out. For foundation, my favorite, favorite foundation has been the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Foundation. Not a fan of the price tag. Yeah, I'm on the fence about repurchasing it, but it is my favorite. Anyway, with this, I'm gonna pump usually two pumps on the back of my hand. This product is nice in that the pumps aren't big. They're kind of half pumps compared to most foundations, which is something she decided on. And she really focuses on this being a product that you're supposed to build in light layers. So that's what I'm gonna do. And yeah, this is shade seven, but if I repurchase, I mean, I will repurchase at some point, but I'm kind of on the fence about switching up my shade. I think this is a pretty good match, but in the daylight, it looks ever so slightly pink compared to my neck. I don't know if you can see it in this light, but I find my neck is a little bit more, my neck and body is a little bit more yellow, even greeny. So I may try her very fair shade that has an olive undertone. I'm really curious to see if that would really blend with my neck, or I might try a warmer shade. But for the most part, it blends really nicely. You can really get away with lots of shades in general with foundation, but she really did a detailed shade range. So just light layers throughout. And in particular, why I love this foundation is it doesn't crease in my expression lines on my forehead. So that was two pumps of the Lisa Eldridge, which is like one pump of a regular foundation. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more because we're doing a red lip today, I like it to be, I like the finish of the skin to be very covered. I like, I like the skin to be very covered and bright and so that the lips can really be the focus. I'll start with one pump for now. I know a lot of people do like dewy skin with a red lip, like really fresh skin and you know, it looks really good, but I went through my dewy foundation phase and frankly, when I look back on photos, it's it's too much. Like I look greasy. So I've really just this year has been like just going into the more matte, just satin finish territory. I overdid it. I really did. And I thought because I have dry skin, I can handle it. But no, a lot of those products just like don't play well with my with my thicker moisturizer. I like to put it a little bit on the eyes too. Again, because I don't find it creases much and it it's such a thin, thinly building foundation. It's not a problem to do that. Okay, next step for my very in-depth routine is a little bit of contour. This is the contour stick from Anastasia Beverly Hills in the shade Fawn. I'm almost out and I've had this for three years. And I swiveled it down and was happy to see that the whole product is filled, unlike some brands who will just be chintzy. So with my contour stick, I like to do it here. Just a thin line, a thin line. And then usually I put a little bit of a line here to like create a jawline that does not extend to the end. Blend that with like a flat, dense brush. Okay, next I'm going in with a little bit of bronzer. This is the Patrick Ta Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo. As you can see, I've really loved this product. Hitting pan, but not so much on this. I use that to kind of set set the, the cream bronzer. 
So it would be nice if he offered refills for like one or the other. So as much as I love this product, I'm not sure I'll repurchase because it doesn't make sense for me to be paying for the powder, which I'll still have when I'm done this. Anyway, I do really love this formula. I put it sort of to shape the face. This isn't a super warm bronzer. It's a little bit more on the neutral side. So that's why I feel comfortable kind of bringing it lower. Kind of framing the apples of the cheeks. Sometimes I bring it on the neck a little bit, up here. I always do do my forehead even though the bangs mostly cover this area. Okay, blush, my favorite part always because it just makes the whole base feel like, oh, okay, I see where you're going makes it come together. I'm gonna to be using from Nude Sticks the shade Sunset Strip. I'm opting for this shade today because it is a nice pink that I think goes with a lot of reds. I am focusing it just a little bit higher than I normally do. I love to put blush everywhere, pre-Raphaelite style. But because I'm going to have a bold red lip, I'm just kind of creating a bit of space in the face from the pink of the cheeks to the red of the lips. Rather than bring it all the way down, I am keeping it a little higher than I normally do. Okay, now you're gonna think I'm a little overboard, going crazy with the concealer and everything, but if I have time and I'm doing a full face, I do like to now go in with a brightening concealer. This is the Stay Naked Correcting Concealer from Urban Decay in the shade 20NN, and it's like brighter than my skin tone. I like to do a dot here, a dot here, a little bit there, here, 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 here. Sometimes a little bit here as well. Again, you're probably like, you literally just put two layers of concealer and foundation there. And yes, that's true. However, this is like a highlighting effect. Again, like I said, with the shadows happening here, I like to brighten as much as possible. And the method to prevent this looking cakey is always light layers, light layers. Anything that's left over on the brush, I like to, again, put it all over the lid to cancel out the redness there. This is a really subtle thing. Feel free to skip this. Okay, now I'm gonna set essentially everything on my face with different products. Again, you're probably like, wow, this girl's going really overboard. But again, this is the routine when I want something in depth that's gonna last me all day because this is like holiday lip, holiday lip vibes. I'm thinking about all the food I'm gonna be eating. I'm gonna be thinking about potentially being sweaty and inside and drinking. And this is what I want to last all day, right? So back into the Patrick Ta, just lightly going in with the powder. And this is not really gonna make a huge effect visually. It's just so everything is set because this has all been cream products so far, right? It's just a very light layer. Boom, that's it. Blush, set the blush with a similar shade. I'm going in with Vive Cherub, a classic, classic pink. Just lightly sweep on top. Now my favorite setting powder from One Size. It's translucent, just a little bit of that in the center of the face. Again, light layers, light layers. For brows, um, I have a couple different routines. It depends on if I am matching my brow shade or tinting it to look like my hair color. So lately I've been tinting it red. I use this Tarte palette a lot of the time, um, the Clay Play palette, really old, but this shade is like an auburn, so I like to use a angled brush to fill it in. Sometimes I use a pencil, like How To Be A Redhead is a brand with redhead products. Sometimes I use their pencil for like 
precision, but sometimes I just want a soft and quick fill. Brows aren't really my forte where I like to spend a lot of time. I find them frustrating and annoying and boring. <laughs> there you can see the difference between those two brows. This just now feels more harmonious and filled in. So then I use a transparent brow setter. This is from Benefit to keep everything in place. There you go. I find brows are almost like skin, where it's like some days I have a good brow day and some days I have a bad brow day, and I have no idea what impacts a good brow day. I know what it impacts a good skin day, which is like my cycle or diet, but why some days do the brows work out so nicely and other days, not so much. Today is a pretty good brow day. Okay, going into the eyes, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple because we're gonna be playing with a few red lips. Uh, first things first, I'm going in with the Hindash Butopsy palette, going to use this very, very pale yellow here that's essentially kind of like my skin tone, but brighter. And I'm gonna put that all over the lid to brighten the whole lid space. Now I'm gonna go into the Natasha Denona Glam Palette into this shade here. That shade is literally just called Blend. I've used that shade, I think, on every bridal makeup I've done. I've done a couple bridal makeup and I find it is a nice, kind of peachy, kind of neutral transition shade. So just in the crease. Being mindful not to bring it here and just leave this open. Okay, gonna leave that there, very easy. Then I'm gonna use a gold highlighter as a highlighter, but also at the center of the eye. This is from Rare Beauty, it's the shade Exhilarate. Now, it did come broken from Sephora, so they luckily didn't charge me, but now I, I still have the highlighter and I don't think I'll ever go through the whole thing because it's so impactful. But anyway, go into that really softly, put it on my hand because this highlighter is intense. I don't want to overdo it. Going in now to the highlighter with an eyeshadow brush, putting it in the center of the lid. Maybe a little bit on the brow bone. On an everyday red lip day, that's how I would leave the eye, but it is the holiday season, so I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of more glitzy glam from Auric. This is the Smoke Reflect and Defiance. This is a very glittery, very glittery gold. Sort of like the uh, Urban Decay the really famous space cowboy shimmer, but this one's a little bit more gold rather than like neutrally even silvery. So I'm gonna go in with this one with my ring finger, just a touch of extra sparkle. I don't wanna go too overboard. This can actually get quite glittery. It's really pretty. It's the kind of shimmer that's just like so fine and like gives that wet sheen. I think I'll put it on the lower lash line too, like that. A winged liner can always look really nice with red, but I'm just gonna use a, the shade Smoke from this palette, this brown, to just softly define the lash line. I don't feel like doing a wing today. Tiny little brush that can just really get in that almost like fold that happens there. I normally pop off for my lash routine, but might as well show it to you since we're doing the whole everything else. So I curl my lashes a little bit. Just 
moving it from the edge up, 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 up. And then just go like this to brush it out in case any lashes kind of stuck together. Now I have a very specific lash routine. The same way that I have that very specific routine I created last summer, I also have a very specific lash routine. This has been a year, years long lash thing. So I use two mascaras. Again, you're like, this bitch is going so overboard with stuff. Uh, take it or leave it. This is just what I love to do. So I go in first with the Monsieur Big from Lancome. This one's a little bit on its way out, but this is a volumizing mascara. So I'll go into the lash and just get a lot of this product worked in there, especially like at the base, because I find this is where I get the volume. Okay, so we got some more dense lashes there. While it's still wet, I go in with the Thrive Lengthening Mascara. This is a tubing mascara. I go in there to help to separate the lashes because it has that type of wand that's geared towards that. Separate them and get the ends more with this. And I flip over onto the other side of the lash because my lashes are blonde. When I look down, even if I just put mascara on this side, you can still see the blonde on the other side. So I do kind of get that and like both sides of the lash. This is one of my favorite mascaras of all time. And it also comes off so easily because it's a tubing mascara. It just pills off rather than smudges. And this is the only mascara I will use on my lower lash line. Because of every other mascara smudges. Every other mascara except this Thrive lengthening. Not the volumizing, the lengthening. So lower lashes. I think I'll go pretty ham with them because... We're not doing a wing or anything, so. And my lower lashes are, can, are pretty long, actually. So they will smudge, they kind of touch the skin. So anything that can like stay in place is impressive. Damn, that's a lot of lower lash. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side off camera and then show you what my favorite false lashes have been, again, for for maybe like a year or two now. Anyway, I'll show you that after I do this side. So my favorite lashes for a while have been from this brand, Kiss. They're the Signature Wispy Effect, and there's a specific number up here I look out for. 55660, yeah. Because some they have a couple ones that are similar, and they're quite cheap. There's five in each pack. I just get them off of Amazon. Um, I found them at Winners before. So I do cut these lashes. So how I'm gonna trim these lashes is where I'm holding it is the part where I'm gonna cut off. And then also where it's sort of smaller, I'm gonna cut the first tier off. Basically so that it starts on one of the smaller tiers because it's like sort of like one, one, two, one. One, two, does that make any sense? But because it's a half lash, I want it to sort of seamlessly go with my current lashes. So I don't want it to be a, too harsh like the first one. So I cut the first little guy off. So this is what I'm left with, small lash. Sometimes I even cut the last one off for an even smaller lash, but this is a glam look. So let's keep that extra tear on. And I use the green duo glue because it has a brush adhesive rather than like a big chunky tube and I just brush that lightly on. So for lashes what I like to look for is a transparent band, something wispy, kind of spaced out, not too dense, and generally with lashes you do like to wait for the glue to mostly dry. However these are so light that I can start placing them before the glue's dried because they'll kind of just stay there on their own. You know, and then you have time to play with it. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and now we get to do the fun part, red lips. One more thing I'm gonna do because I now have all these lashes on is balance the lower lash line. Going back into the shade blend, same brush. And I'm just gonna put a bit of it on the lower 
lash line going quite in, far in. Now that balances the top and the bottom because uh, the lashes were looking a little bit heavy compared to the totally blank lash line, lower lash line. Okay, so I have three reds in front of me from Lisa Eldridge. These are my babies. I gave birth to them. No, I didn't. Lisa gave birth to them and I adopted them. So I have two classic reds and one more of like a vibrant, vibrant orangey red. And I'll swatch them all for you. From top to bottom, we have Velvet Ribbon, which is your most classic blue-based, ultra-vibrant red. Then Velvet Jazz, which is a little bit more muted, toned down. It has a little bit of sort of dark pink in it. And then Velvet Morning, which is a super vibrant orange. Touch a red in there, but... Um, yeah, I think all these would be great to create a statement red. So I'm going to do all of them. We'll see which one we like best for this look. Okay, the first one I'm going to show you is Velvet Morning. A little bit less of a traditional red and again, more of that really vibrant orange. Okay. This is Velvet Morning, so bright, so vivid. To me, this is the type of shade that is a bright summer lip because it's so vibrant and orange. Or someone with a deeper complexion, I think, would pull this off really nicely for like a holiday red. Uh, I, like, I do wear it in winter for sure. It's definitely a statement, statement color. Or I think depending on your outfit if you want to go a bit more orange. So Velvet Jazz, this definitely has that deep winteriness to it. Now with these lip shades, I do like to make sure my lips have been moisturized, but I don't want my lips to actually feel balmy because these, these formulas really shine when you can really show off the matteness of this formula. I don't have the matching liners, so I just use a brush to get soft and clean edges. And here is Velvet Jazz. This one is really speaking to me today. It just has that beautiful depth to it. It's definitely a statement lip, but I find this one feels a bit more harmonious with my coloring than the orange one. So I don't know what's going on with color seasons there, but it's like this one somehow is more in my zone rather than creating a, an effect of like high contrast. So I don't know. I just think this one's so classy, you know? This is the one I think I might rock today if I was going to a holiday party tonight, but now I'm going to show you the last one, Velvet Ribbon, which is just that classic vibrant blue-based red and... We'll see if I feel like that one is the winner today. But yeah, this is Velvet Jazz. My lips are a little bit stained, but I'm not concerned because these uh, these lipsticks are very pigmented, so it's gonna cover it's gonna cover any of the staining. So going into Velvet Ribbon. Okay, lastly, here is Velvet Ribbon. This is the lip that's gonna leave a little bit more of that statement. People are gonna notice it, you know? I just really don't think you can go wrong with a lip like this. It is so timeless, so classic. And yeah, this is definitely what I'm gonna be wearing in the next couple days at this time of year, but I definitely do this look in the summer as well. I just will more likely keep the eyes matte rather than having that little bit of sparkle that makes it celebratory. And yeah, that's it for today. Let me know in the comments down below which was your favorite lip that I used today or what's your favorite red that you wear when you wanna rock a bold red lip. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, stay witchy, stay bitchy, have a good week. Bye witches.